we're going to graph the trigonometric function y equals 2 cos of 1 half x. I'm going to use a table of values. Now my x's are going to be 0 degrees, 90 degrees, 180 degrees, 270, and 360. And just in case your teacher uses radians, I'm going to put numbers in radians here as well. This is 0 pi over 2 pi, 3 pi over 2, and 2 pi. Use whichever of these you're most familiar with in terms of measuring angles. Now, normal cosine of that value of x, the cosine of 0 is 1, the cosine of 90 degrees is 0, the cos of 180 is negative 1, the cos of 270 is 0, and the cos of 360 is back to 1. 0 comma 1, 90 comma 0, 180 comma negative 1. This is the regular cosine function that you're familiar with. But you're applying transformations to this. You're doing a vertical stretch by a factor of 2. You're making the function 2 times taller than it was. So I want you to multiply all of these numbers by 2. Multiplying 0 by 2 keeps it as 0, but I'll still show it. That's negative 2. So take a look. The numbers we get as our y values here are twice as large. We go twice as low and twice as high because we're stretching by a factor of 2 vertically. Now, what is the effect of 1 half inside of the bracket being applied to x before you take the cos? This is a horizontal stretch by a factor of two. That means that each of these x values is going to get doubled. And I know what you're thinking. We doubled these y's. That was a vertical stretch. Why are we also going to double the x's when that's a fraction and that's a whole number? Well, when you're doing something to x before taking the actual function itself, in this case, cos, these x's have to be doubly as big as they were to offset this halving before you take the cos. So in order to get the cos of 360, if this was going to be 360, that x actually has to be 720, because half of 720 is 360. And that gives you the same output as what we had on this line. So we're going to double all of these. 360 becomes 720, or in radians, that becomes 4 pi. Double this is 540, double this is 3 pi, double this is 360, double this is 2 pi, double that is 180, double that is just pi, and double zero is zero. So the function itself has points at 0 comma 2, and then 180 degrees comma 0, and 360 degrees comma negative 2, etc., etc. I'm going to do this in both degrees and radians for you. Let's just try to draw ourselves a graph here. I'm going to put this as 1, this as 2, this as negative 1, this as negative 2. And uh, I need to make sure I have enough space here. 4, 8, 12, 16. I think this is going to be my 720 degrees. Half of that takes me to here. That's 360 degrees. Half of that is 180. And halfway in between these is 540. Okay, good. I put, I personally put four squares for each of those values. Zero degrees is here on the y axis, but that probably goes without saying. Now you're also allowed to say that this is pi, 2 pi, 3 pi, and 4 pi, but it'll be the same graph no matter which scale you use. We have a point at 0, 2, which the only real effect here is that it's been stretched vertically by 2. But then 90, 0 became 180, 0. So it's been stretched horizontally. 360, comma, negative 2, 540, 0, and 720, 2. There we go. Now, the way you should graph this, the way that I teach kids to, to cheat it's not cheating, but it's just like a trick, is that I don't want you connecting these with straight lines because trig graphs are curves. So I tell kids to pretend that it's a semicircle 
and you're just trying to create arcs or half circles connecting each set of three points. I find when kids do that, they end up getting more of a wave shape like they want. Now this function continues forever in both directions. I don't know how many cycles you were asked to do, but this repeats over and over and over again, spaced out the same amount. This looks just like a regular cos graph, right? Um, the original cosine graph only went up to one and down to negative one, and it only went over to 360 for one cycle. But we've stretched by two vertically, and we've stretched by two horizontally. Get it? Got it? Good. Thanks for being with me, and best of luck.